August 7th. Uh, Van Dusen's dry below 101. This big turn is a, taking a lot of meat off this little bank. Of course, that all goes that way. And right where this person and their dogs is crossing down here is totally dry for it looks like 150 yards near the mouth of the Van Dusen. I'm here at the riffle coming into the Van Dusen hole. This is the flow of the Eel River right now, August 7th, 2018. I just had three summer steelhead about 23 to 25 inches swim off. <clears throat> they were hanging out in the riffle curtain here, the base of the riffle. And we've got a school of maybe 30 what look like suckers. Uh, could have been steelhead. Try to get a better eye on them down in the hole. Uh, the hole doesn't do any more than six feet deep that I found. Pretty large area of five feet. Not much for a holding hole, but it's about all we got around here. This is a special spot and historically has held a lot of fish pretty much any time of year. Man, if this river were flowing stronger. This area just below the 12th Street Hole, half mile or so, is one of the impoundments that the gravel operators, the gravel miners, dig parallel to the river channel. Here we are on the west side of the island, the north end of Fortuna. And here's the main flow of the eel, because very little goes on the east side right now. And it's disconnected from this impoundment that was dug out last year. They're about 300 feet long and 100 feet wide. And this is, this is what's left. So the river last winter at 100,000 plus CFS didn't have enough power down here on the wide floodplain below 12th Street Hole to incorporate this into the river channel or fill it in. So is this beneficial? It looks like it's completely cut off from the river. Um, presumably maybe it has some fish in it, alive or dead. It's actually a technical spot in this like 120 CFS where most of the current and the thalweg is going under all these willow branches. Total strainer on the lower eel and low flow. That's what we do. Deer crossing the river. See the deer crossing the river? Yeah, the eel's alive. We just got to give it a little help, and uh, this thing will just blow up with life. A million salmon. That's what we're going for, right? I'm watching an osprey up here that had a fish. I think it lost it. It keeps diving, looking for it. We're here at Drake at Palmer Boulevard. And the Drake Hole is only along these old concrete pilings along the edge, river right, and it's cut off now from the main channel. The main channel is about two feet deep or so, two to three feet deep at the most. Things look really bad. Drake was where almost all the fish were holding below the gravel mining last year, and uh, so we're gonna we're gonna see what happens. This is looking pretty bleak as far as holding water for salmon. And remember, rain doesn't just fix it. Turbid and shallow isn't much better than uh, super shallow and clear. Um, the fact is we're missing our holes. It's not just better if the fish can suddenly swim farther. 12th Street's the only big hole between Tidewater at Fernbridge and Weymouth past the mouth of the Van Dusen. And we don't know if 12th Street has hyperreic flow or cold stratification. Urgh! This river needs to be a river. Here's the low end of the Drake Hole. Talk about filled in. This is disastrous for this hole. And there were three to five hundred salmon circling around right out here where this gravel is last year and the year before. It shrunk a lot last year, now it's pretty much totally gone. And there's not a replacement hole.
We're at the top of the Wurzwick run. And here's the first riffle in fresh water outside of Tidewater down there at Fernbridge. So the Wurzwick run is riffle free from Fernbridge all the way up through. Here's the bottom of the riffle. We didn't see any Salmonids here. Uh, pretty heavy algae coating everywhere. And for 120 to 140 cubic feet per second right here, uh, things are looking pretty ugly for August 17th. We're descending the riffle here at the top of Wurzwick. You can see uh, the tire tracks and the gravel over there, people crossing the river. You can see it come through right in the water surface. This is one of the crossings where they can access the whole Fern Bridge and Wurzwick area since the Wurzwick access is closed. And I'm for people having somewhere to go four wheeling, but why does it have to be the Eel River and crossing it when it's in this kind of condition and fish are going to be coming? We're here at what I'm calling Lower Drake Hole now. It's basically just a little piece of water that's cut off from the river for the most part. The river channel is now over here and it's not up against anything so it's all pretty shallow. Maybe a three or four foot spot as it goes up toward the confluence of the channels that come around the island at the north end of Fortuna. But uh, Drake is, is gone. We've dragged across the lower riffle here at the bottom of the confluence run. Here's the old Drake over here. There's still probably a little bit of deep stuff right along the rock pilings, but that whole algae mat area and in between them is all very, very shallow. So basically that whatever hole is there, is, which is a lot smaller than it should be, is shut off from the river. And all these deposits down here, it looks like maybe six to eight feet of deposits, where last year with Mary Burke and Julie, we saw those hundreds of salmon, adult salmon and a sturgeon uh, right off of that rock pile on the other side of David there. Now there's there's no water. All right, we've navigated across a shallow spot between the algae mats into the old Drake hole. It's cut off from the main river channel, and we're going to see about some depths. Right now it's uh, not good, a couple feet. And this right here and right over in here is exactly where the 500 kings were circling around that uh, Jason Hartwick captured from his drone a couple years ago while they were making a river's last chance and uh, yeah the total loss of this holding water not only is it cut off from the main channel it's filled in too and the bottom end of this hole where the 300 big kings and the sturgeon were hanging out last year in October is completely filled in you can see how this whole area is like two feet taller than the run below it and all that gravel wasn't even there last year the riffle was over here there was an episode when I was fishing down here one evening, I think it was in March, and a guy on a four-wheel all-terrain thing with his daughter in it, a, a dune buggy kind of thing, came across the riffle and got stuck. And he dug it out going back and forth, finally got out about half an hour later, and the whole river changed after that. That could have well precipitated this entire change. So yeah, you know, why do people need to just drive in the river? Four and a half feet here in the old 10 to 14 foot deep drake hole and again this is all really shallow between the algae mats we'll probably have to get out and drag the kayaks like ankle deep and the whole bottom end of the hole is filled in there's no outgoing riffle this is just cut off water so four and a half feet or not i don't even think the salmon will come in and use this it's not in the in the river channel anymore and you might have four and a half feet up here, especially up where the confluence, the two channels from around the island come together. But uh, it's just not enough. It's not a hole. There's a turtle in the old hole. This hole needs reconnection. It needs some work. It needs to get dug out. Little toad. We've dragged the kayaks up. Uh, the really weak riffle coming out of the boxcar side and as you can see the boxcars are reconnected to the long hole all the way from the north end of Fortuna at the overpass 
to the old boxcars here. For the last few years, there's been dry gravel between me and, and the boxcars. So you've got some volume here. It's real shallow, but we're going to go up along the tree line and see how the old hole is. And see, here's a whole bunch of holding water, but the salmon can't really go this way. They don't choose the 10% of the flow side. They'll go to the other side where there isn't. Here's the old boxcar hole. There really isn't a hole. Like I said, there might be a few feet up against the boxcars themselves, but I'm on a gravel bar in less than six inches of water. David's barely making it through. You'll see how shallow that is. And so, yes, it's significant there's water leading up to the boxcars again. Enough gravel has moved, presumably. But we're above the main river channel, and there, again, there's only about 10% of the river flow on this side on this side, they've got a place to be between Warswick, Missing Drake, getting here. Is on that side, there's not much going on for holding water. We've gotten up to these old snags near the top of the old homeless hole. The homeless encampment was near the overpass right at the northwest corner of Fortuna. And this gravel bar is all new right up here. The riffle has smudged down into what used to be the head of the hole and was the deepest part. Um, now we've got about four and five feet along this tree line and it looks like it tapers way off to swampy over there. And then again, here's a riffle right up here where that egret just took off. Changes still though. This holding water of a quarter mile from the boxcars to here is way better than anything on the west side. Here's the main flow coming in from the uh, east channel around the island at the confluence here. The main flow from that side, rather, which is only maybe 10% of the river flow. Is the main river flow is over here on the west side of the island. And we're going to go investigate those willows where we heard some summer steelhead have been trapped. What we're investigating here on the lower eel is how the holes and runs and ripples have changed below Fortuna down to Fernbridge, which you can see in the distance. The old Drake hole is cut off from the main river channel and filled in to extremes. Um, Warswick right above Fernbridge is about the same as it was when the fish contracted a disease three years ago. And the main channel goes around the west side of the island like it did many many years ago although it's not as far over to Pleasant Point but it doesn't have established holes runs and riffles it's all changing and as a matter of fact there's an impoundment from the gravel mining that's still up there like a little lake completely shut off from the river meanwhile over here where the river's been for decades you've got all this established riparian edge and the water goes right up to the boxcars again we're not sure how deep it is up against them but that was all dry gravel last year, so stuff is moving there, but there's very little flow going on this east side of the island. Like 10% of the river, it looks like. So, rain doesn't just fix this. We might get the right rains to allow a bunch of fish to go through and things stay elevated, but you have a lack of holding water here right where the staging adult fall chinook run wants to be. Out of tidewater, firm bridge, above firm bridge and below Fortuna. It happens every year. So what we're going to see this year with not enough holding water, you hear this all your life. Oh, the salmon used to be so thick you could walk across them on their backs. Well, yeah, there used to be a lot more fish, but they'd also get pushed into areas like this that are lacking habitat, lacking depth, and they keep coming from below. There's 10,000 of them and start pushing each other out the sides of the river. And people see abundance. What they should also be seeing is, oh, or they pushed into a a spot where they can't get up because they don't have enough water, they don't have enough holding water, the riffles are too long, shallow. This is what's up. Nature's not just fixing it. We need to give it some help. We're on a riffle here above Drake on the west side channel, the main river flow. And here's a pretty nice little riffle that these willow islands create. 
this might be where I was told by a friend recently that uh, some fish were stuck. So we're looking for them. Here they are. There's just enough Eel River water moving over them to make them hard to see. These are trapped steelhead. Well, they're not trapped. They could just go kamikaze and try to get up that little bony riffle and who knows where stuff that just started flowing on this side of the island last year, this year. And this is what we got two months before the rainy season. Just having some holes dug out would change the entire reality of this river around here. Easily a dozen. Now they're above me. They'll probably stay. Take what you can get around here. <laughs> <laughs>